Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. We're going to check out a Guitar Center exclusive guitar that was recently discontinued that we unboxed in this episode over here. But it was such a nice example, I decided I'm going to go ahead and do the full review and demo. I had so many messages wanting to purchase this thing from me, so I was like, yeah, we need to document this thing. So let's go ahead and learn the tale of the Les Paul Blood Moon. Back in 2019, Guitar Center did an exclusive called The Dark Knight. It was launched as a Black Friday special model, but it was available all the way through 2020 until they could sell out all the stock, and it did not take them long to sell it all. These were really nice Les Pauls with quilty tops, a nice gray satin finish all over the entire instrument, and it had unique attributes, from the inlays and headstock logo to the flamed maple neck. These were based on a small custom shop run of Les Pauls called The Dark Side. So in late 2020, around the same Black Friday time, I do believe, they introduced this version. It was basically just an updated take on The Dark Knight and the fact that it has a red top this time instead of being grayed out. Now, peculiarly enough, the neck is still flamed maple, but they left it this gray color. So these ones are a little bit unique in that aspect in the fact that they have that whole color mismatch going on from red to that dark gray. But these were $3,000 brand new, but now that they're discontinued, it's hard to say. Is 2022 going to see like a green one show up? Are we going to get an orange one? Are they gonna do more? Or are they completely retiring this series? Because if they completely retire it, these are really cool Les Pauls. I could see them appreciating in the future. But what makes this model different from a regular Les Paul? These are kind of based off of the Les Paul Modern in a roundabout way as far as specs. They have really nice pickups with electronics that can be modified through push-pull pots. We'll talk about that on the workbench. And they have the ultra modern weight relief. That's the V-shaped style one. So they're pretty lightweight. So that's what they took from the Les Paul Modern. They don't unfortunately have the swooped heel cut right here, but that's all right. Everything else is kind of like a standard 50s in that aspect, besides having the maple neck, the colored over Gibson logo, and the ebony fretboard with our grayed out markers. But we've got the single ply binding and all that with a beautiful maple top here. But you also have to remember, these are satin finishes. So if you're a diehard collector, this is gonna be hard to find in a couple of years because satin finishes, as you play them, they naturally buff up into gloss. I mean, check out the other one of these I had at one point in time in the unboxing series. That one had been glossed up in many areas. So not only does this one have a cool evil looking top with a fantastic neck, it hasn't been played too much either. So you have very minimal evidence of any buffing right there. What else makes these things interesting is they're basically a model to use up Gibson's leftover stock of the HP cases. These things brand new, like if you bought them separately, if I remember correctly, they were like 700 or 800 bucks. I mean, they are heavy duty flight cases here. They're pretty nice. From their latches right here that are pure metal to your straight up mahogany wooden handle, like that thing's not gonna break on you. And they're ridiculously heavy, but unfortunately they scratch really easily. They get big dings in them. So if you want this case to look nice, definitely leave your protective film over top of them. I mean, you can kind of see some of the scuffing that I'm talking that will, will happen. But if you don't care what the case looks like, obviously you don't have to worry about that. But that's something cool that these things have because say you don't like high performance specs. This is a guitar you could buy that has the case, but without that. And you get all your other good case candy from your strap and there's that multi-tool, your baby photo, polished cloth, pre-pack checklist, all that good stuff here. However, is it true that this is just a red top version of the Dark Knight? That's what I wanted to find out today because after taking a deep dive on the spec sheet, I think these ones are actually slightly more enhanced than the first run. Let's go ahead, throw it on the workbench and take an individual look at those parts and specs. All right, let's go ahead and check out the specs of the Blood Moon Les Paul. Starting with our neck pickup here, we've got a Gibson 57 Classic with markings like that. And our bridge pickup on this one is also a Super 57. So those are the exact same pickups as the first run. And as far as our cavities, they do have some sort of a marking right there. Looks like it might say C4. I think the other one also said that. And then in here we have our regular code, LPDSG19 maybe? But you can see our cross section of the two-piece maple top onto the mahogany body right here. It's like you're looking inside a body or something. But you'll see that the pickup covers are actually a dark chrome. So sometimes they can look like regular chrome, other times they look like they've been blacked out. All I've got to say is they're very prone to showing fingerprints. 
Got our pickup readings within the circuit. We have 8.54k ohms in our bridge. Neck position, 7.73. Middle position, 4.06. Now, of course, you can split all of those. And unfortunately, probably because this is a PCB system, it's not actually going to show us it. But trust me, it'll get you about half those readings. As far as our bridge, this one features an aluminum lightweight one and has the branding API for Advanced Plating Incorporated on it. It's Nashville in style, and you can adjust it using an Allen key instead of the thumb wheels if you prefer. Strangely enough though, our tailpiece is full weight. Now let's gloss over the top here. You can see there's no poker chip stock on this model. It just kind of helps it make it look extra spooky. And the website calls them quilted tops. It's kind of hard to even say what this top is because it's got some flame and some light quilt characteristics to it. It doesn't do a whole lot of movement because of the satin finish that's on it. Usually full on gloss helps show that off, but I was wrong earlier. I told you guys there's no buffed up areas. There is a very small one right here. It's not super apparent, but it's definitely there. So I guess if you're looking for absolute perfect, nah, this one's not quite that, but that is a very mild case. Normally you can see it like plain as day, even like right here. So this was very lightly used. But now pickups within our circuit, we've got coil splitting, we've got direct to bridge, and we've got in and out of phase. So your middle position only can have that weird quacky sound. However, there might be something else slightly different to this one that we need to look into the back first. But that's what I'm hinting at that could make this one different from the previous. Oh yeah, that's a great angle now that it's not all reflective. It's just such an evil looking top. Might not be the most heavily figured of the series, but it works really well for this whole theme. So moving on from our mahogany body and maple top, we have a maple neck that is asymmetrical. So that means it's gonna be a little bit fatter on this side and a little bit thinner on that one. But this has 22 medium jumbo frets with your blacked out acrylic trapezoid inlay up and down the fretboard. And this is true ebony. A lot of times on Guitar Center exclusive models like the SG and Les Paul Raven tributes or any of the other ones that we've documented, they like to use rich light, but these guys got full on ebony fretboards, which makes them extra special in my book. But what's also cool about these is they have a compound radius. So that's something else that makes them more similar to the Les Paul Modern. So that means it's a little flatter up here at 10 inch radius. But by the time you get all the way up here, it's like closer to a 14. I've seen it sometimes advertised as 16, but that seems a little bit too rounded. So it looks like a 10 to 14 to me. So those are pretty high end specs. Let's check our nut width, 1.66 inches by the 12th, 2.07. First fret neck depth, 0.84, and stays pretty skinny, 0.9 by the 12th. Here's what that looks like at the first fret and the 12th fret. You can see how it's just a little bit more humped right here and then a little slimmer there. Is it a huge feel difference? No, but for some players, that might be the difference that they need, especially with the compound radius up front. As far as the headstock goes, we have a white Les Paul model silkscreen and a grayed over Gibson logo. I really think on this one they should have read the logo, they should have read the inlays, really match the same theme as that last one, but you know, it's still cool in its own right. Truss rod's looking good on this one, and the cover itself is just black. And now we move on to the backside. So this is where things were supposed to be a little bit different. This is Guitar Center's actual page for this. It says this one offered coil splitting or tapping. It's your choice via a dip switch in the control cavity. So like one of those super fancy PCB systems that has a little switch. Unfortunately, no. Guitar Center can just never get their specs right on guitars, unfortunately. This doesn't have the dip switch. Not that I can see anywhere. Thought maybe they moved it onto one of the sides of the pots because the PCB goes up there. But no, this is the exact same as the Dark Knight. You only have coil splitting. But honestly, once you find which one you want anyways, you can check out my HP Les Paul review to show you what the different tones of that would be. But you're not really missing too much. But I thought for sure that'd be the one thing that we could say, oh yeah, you want the Blood Moon because you can choose between splitting and tapping. But no, nah, it's, it's just the same. <laughs> it just has a different top color. So other than that, I found a very interesting QC thing here. So we've got a couple of small dings, but you see what that is? That is actually an employee's hair 
embedded into the finish. That happens sometimes. I was first made aware of things like that can even happen when there was a bee stock at Sweetwater one point in time that said there's a hair in the finish. So there's a couple of light dings on the back here. And what looks like a very small scuff mark right here. Other than that, this is also a beautiful semi-gloss satin finish back here. Like, not satin satin, it's still very smooth, but you can still see the wood grain through that. You can't necessarily feel it, though. But this offers thin binding in the cutaway and has a black back inside, so it kind of complements this whole red top when you look at it from an angle. That's a sweet ride. As far as the Apple Jack, it uses a black plastic jack plate. You've got the larger style strap buttons on here, also in black. And here's our beautiful flamed maple neck. All of these will have some figuring in them. Not all of them are quite as nice as this one. Like, this is very nice. But that is an official spec on these flamed maple necks with a black heel. But moving up the back side of the headstock, we can read our serial number, which dates this one to 2020, very late in the year, 328. So this was definitely one of the earlier batches of these. And this was the first batch of the day, the 84th one produced. Technically the 85th, because there is a 000 number. All said and done, this one weighs 8 pounds, 1.5 ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how it sounds. <laughs> go through these tones we just heard that neck pickup it's got a nice woody sound to it try that on the bridge very dark sounding Let's try that middle position. this time. Can't say I'm a huge fan of the neck split like that. tones really come to life when you're playing something like that. one is just direct to bridge so that means all the other pots are out of the circuit it's like being directly wired out to here essentially so it's going to make that bridge pick up a little bit stronger so here it is normally versus direct to bridge and then this one is you're out of phase so here it is in phase out of phase so 
just kind of gives you a quacky tone is the best way to put it. <laughs> Sounds okay on occasion, depending on what you're going for. Now let's try this with a little bit of distortion. <laughs> You can see it just gets a little bit crunchier. Now that we know all about the Blood Moon Guitar Center exclusive Les Paul Standard, what are my final thoughts on this thing? Very similar to the Dark Knight. If you've liked the Dark Knight and you tried one of those before, this is pretty much the exact same thing. It just has a red top this time. It is a very lightweight guitar and that satin finish feels nice. It's not like the cheaper end satin finishes. It still has a slight glossiness to it, but not full on. But if you're a big fan of Les Pauls and you just want something a little bit different within your collection, I think that's when one of these things really comes to life and shines through because it's different. It's got some interesting tones that you can play with here. Honestly, I didn't care too much for the coil split. So it's nice that it has it in case you don't have a single coil guitar. But if you're trying to replace your single coil guitar, yeah, probably not. But it's there if you need it. So is the out of phase. But cosmetics, this thing is just a really cool sight to behold. Oh, and who doesn't love a maple neck on a Les Paul? It's hard to find those on higher end Les Pauls. A lot of times Gibson will just use that on lower budget grade levels until you get to the high end custom shops when you get the multi-piece maple necks. But having one that's just one piece and flamed like this, that's kind of cool. The ebony fretboard feels great and it's got some very modernized appointments on here from that compound radius to the asymmetrical neck profile. It's wasted on a guitar player like me, but <laughs> if you like doing the solo-y stuff, that might become beneficial to you. But if nothing else, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed finally seeing one of these in the review and demo style. All right, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.